Building Data Lakes on AWS. In the following video demonstration, we will learn how to build a simple data lake on AWS using a combination of services, including AWS Glue, Amazon Athena, Amazon S3, and Amazon Relational Database Service, or Amazon RDS. I'm Gary Stafford, AWS Area Principal Solutions Architect, and a member of AWS's Analytics Technical Field Community. You can find me on LinkedIn, GitHub, Medium, Twitter, and YouTube at Gary Stafford. This video represents my viewpoints and not those of my employer, Amazon Web Services, AWS. You can git clone the source code for this demonstration on GitHub. The name of the project in my GitHub repository is Ticket Data Lake Demo. Agenda. First, we will define what a data lake is. Then I will describe the data set we'll be using for the demonstration. Next, I'll review the architecture used in the demonstration. And finally, we'll spend the majority of our time in a hands-on demonstration. What is a data lake? Two definitions, the first from Databricks and the second from AWS. First from Databricks, a data lake is a central location that holds a large amount of data in its native raw format. Compared to a hierarchical data warehouse, which stores data in files and folders, a data lake uses a flat architecture and object storage to store the data. Next, the definition of a data lake from AWS. A centralized repository that allows you to store all of your structured and unstructured data at any scale. You can store your data as is without having to first structure the data and run different types of analytics from dashboards and visualizations to big data processing, real-time analytics and machine learning to guide better decisions. Databricks is an industry leader in the data lake space. Databricks has developed, in my opinion, one of the best and simplest architectures for organizing a data lake. Here in this diagram, courtesy of Databricks, we see the Databricks medallion architecture. According to Databricks, a medallion architecture is a data design pattern used to logically organize data in a lake house with the goal of incrementally and progressively improving the structure and the quality of data as it flows through each layer of the architecture, from bronze to silver to gold layer tables. Medallion architectures are sometimes referred to as multi-hop architectures. In the diagram, note the three distinct areas or sections of the data lake. First, we have the bronze or raw data, then we have the silver or augmented data, and finally, we have the gold or aggregated data, or a term which Databricks also uses, which I prefer, curated data, so gold or curated data. This architecture is what we will attempt to replicate on AWS as we build out our data lake during the demonstration. Sample data. For this demonstration, I will be using the Ticket Sample Database. The Ticket Sample Database simulates a platform that brings together buyers and sellers of tickets to entertainment events. The Ticket Database was designed to demonstrate Amazon Redshift, AWS's cloud data warehouse. It's a small database consisting of a single schema with seven tables, category, event, venue, user, listing, sale, and date. There's a link provided here to get more information about the Ticket Sample Database. Here is a schema diagram showing the relationship between the seven Ticket Database tables. A data lake most often contains data from multiple data sources, each data source with its own storage format, protocol, and connection method. To simulate this, I have split up the ticket database tables in order to represent three different typical enterprise systems. Each simulated system uses a different database engine, all on Amazon RDS. First we have the category, event, and venue tables. These have been moved to an Amazon RDS for PostgreSQL database. These represent a SaaS-based event management system, or EMS. Next, we have the listing, sales, and date tables. These represent a commercial off-the-shelf based e-commerce platform. These have been moved to an Amazon RDS for MySQL database. Lastly, we have the users table. This has been moved to an Amazon RDS for SQL Server database. This represents a custom, customer relationship management, or CRM system. We will use the following AWS services in this demonstration. Amazon Simple Storage Service, or Amazon S3. AWS Glue Studio. AWS Glue Data Catalog. AWS Glue Connections. AWS Glue Crawlers. AWS Glue Jobs. Amazon Athena. And finally, the AWS CLI. 
On the screen you see a diagram which represents the architecture for our demonstration. The data will be organized based on a pattern of bronze, silver, and gold data. In step one, we will catalog the data in our three data sources, the Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, and PostgreSQL databases, all running on Amazon RDS into an AWS Glue Data Catalog. The AWS Glue Data Catalog is a Hive-compatible Metastore, which stores the metadata, schema, and partition information about the data in our data sources and in our data lake. In step two, we will move the data from our data sources into the bronze or raw area of our data lake using a series of AWS Glue jobs. The AWS Glue jobs use Apache Spark. We will store the data in Apache Parquet format. Parquet is a columnar format commonly used to store data in data lakes. This bronze or raw data will be cataloged in the same AWS Glue Data Catalog as our data sources. In step three, we will cleanse, augment, and prepare the data for data analytics, again using a series of AWS Glue jobs. The data will be written into the silver area of our data lake, also in Apache Parquet format. Once again, the refined or silver data will be cataloged in our AWS Glue Data Catalog. Lastly, in step four, we will use Amazon Athena to produce curated data sets by joining several tables in the silver area of our data lake. We will produce multiple views of the data and partition the data based on the most common query and filtering patterns of our end users. These curated data sets will be written back to the gold or curated section of our data lake as partitioned Apache Parquet format files. Since this is a simple demonstration, we can't possibly incorporate all the processes that go into building and managing a typical production-ready data lake. However, since these are critically important items, I want to quickly review the items which are out of scope for this demonstration before continuing. The items that are out of scope for this demonstration are Change Data Capture, or CDC, handling changes to the system of record in our data lake, Transactional Data Lake, table formats such as Apache Hootie, Apache Iceberg, and Delta Table, Fine grain authorization, database, table, column, and row level permissions. Data lineage, tracking data as it flows from data sources to consumption. Data governance, managing the availability, usability, integrity, and security of the data in our data lake. Streaming data, data that is generated continuously. Data inspection, scanning data for sensitive or unexpected content, such as PII. Data Ops, automating the testing, deployment, and execution of our data pipelines. Infrastructure as Code, infrastructure provisioning automation as it relates to our data lake. Data Lake Tiered Storage, and finally, Data Backup, High Availability, and Disaster Recovery. Let's get started with Part 1 of our demonstration, Cataloging Our Data Sources. Before we get started with the demonstration, let's take a look at the GitHub project. The GitHub project contains all the files you'll need to follow along with the demonstration. In the CloudFormation folder, I've included two CloudFormation stacks. The first CloudFormation stack will create all of the resources necessary to stand up your data lake, including the AWS Glue Crawlers, the AWS Glue Connections, the AWS Glue Jobs, and the AWS Glue Data Catalog. It will also provision two Amazon S3 buckets, one for the Glue Jobs, and one to act as our data lake. The second stack will create three Amazon RDS databases. Next, we have the Glue Script subdirectory. This directory contains 14 Glue jobs, seven bronze and seven silver, which correspond to the different parts of our data lake. We'll be talking about these in a little while. There's also a SQL Scripts folder, which contains the Amazon Athena commands we'll be running in part four of our demonstration. There's also three scripts, an MS SQL, a MySQL, and a Postgres SQL command SQL file that contain all the commands I use to create my databases. And lastly, there's a script if you wanna create more sales data. The database contains about 175,000 records. If you wanna generate more records to test the performance of the data lake or Amazon Athena or the Glue Jobs, you can create additional synthetic sales records using that script. And lastly, there's a readme file, which you see on the screen. The readme file contains all the commands which I'll be running as part of the demonstration. Let's switch back over to the architectural diagram and take a look at step one. In step one, we're gonna use three AWS glue crawlers and the AWS glue connections to talk to our three data sources, the PostgreSQL, MySQL, and SQL Server databases. We're going to catalog the seven tables in the three Amazon RDS databases into our AWS glue data catalog. If I switch back over to PyCharm for a minute, 
You can see on the right hand side of my screen, I've connected to those three databases. So you can see that I have my MS SQL database, which represents my CRM system. I have the ticket database, the CRM schema, and within the CRM schema, I have the users table. Within my MySQL database, which represents my e-commerce system, I have my e-com database or schema with three tables, date, listing, and sales. And lastly, I have my Postgres SQL database, which represents my event management system. I have a ticket database with an EMS schema with three tables, category, event, and venue. So those are my seven tables divided across my three data sources. We're gonna be cataloging the metadata information about those seven tables in those three systems into our AWS Glue Data Catalog. So let's get started with our three crawlers. The commands can be found in the readme file. I'll copy those. I've logged into my AWS account and I'm gonna start the three crawlers and then we'll switch over to the AWS console to take a look at the crawlers. It looks like the three crawlers started successfully. Let me switch back over to the AWS console and we'll take a look at the three crawlers running. So I'm in the AWS Glue console. Let's go over to crawlers and we'll find our ticket crawlers. We see that our three ticket crawlers are running. So our ticket MySQL, MS SQL, and Postgres SQL crawlers are running. Those are crawling our three data sources. They're connecting to our data sources using our AWS Glue connections that we created. And it will catalog all the metadata information about those seven tables into our AWS Glue data catalog. When this process finishes, we'll take a look at the results. So I've restarted the video and you can see that the three crawlers are stopping. On the far right hand side of the screen, you can see the table changes. You can see that there are seven tables created across the three crawlers. While these are finishing, let's take a look at our AWS Glue Data Catalog. So in my Data Lake Demo Glue Data Catalog, you can see that we have no tables. So we started with an empty AWS Glue Data Catalog. Let me refresh and see if our tables are there yet. So we have seven tables now, and you can see that they're prefixed with source. As we build our data lake, we'll have four different prefixes, source, bronze, silver, and gold, representing the different areas of our data lake. The seven source tables represent the source metadata or the information about the tables in our three source systems. You can see we have the names of the tables. You can see that we have the location. So we either have the database and table or the database schema and table, depending on the database engine. And you can see the classification, MySQL, SQL Server, or Postgres SQL. So it looks like that worked. Let's take a look at one of our tables. I'll open up one of the tables in our AWS Glue Data Catalog. In this case, I've opened the source ecom date table. So this represents the date table in our e-commerce system. You can see that that came from our MySQL database. And we can see the schema. So the calendar date, week, month, year, day, etc. These is the schema which represents the table in MySQL. We don't have any partitions and we don't have any indexes yet. Looks like step one succeeded. In step two, we're gonna use these seven AWS Glue Data Catalog tables, and we're gonna use a series of AWS Glue jobs to copy information from our three data sources into our data lake. So move data from our three databases into Amazon S3 and catalog that using the same AWS Glue Data Catalog. In step two, we're gonna copy the data from our three data sources, our three databases, our seven tables, into the bronze or raw area of our data lake using a series of AWS Glue jobs based on Apache Spark and written in Python. Let's switch over to the GitHub project for a minute and take a look at those jobs. So in the Glue Job Scripts folder, there is a bronze subdirectory and we have the seven jobs. Now these seven jobs are very simple. We're simply copying the data out of our data source, out of our three databases, one table per job. So there's no ETL or ELT involved. It's just a simple extraction from the database into the data lake into our Amazon S3 bucket. Before I run the AWS Glue jobs, let's take a look at the Amazon S3 bucket where we're gonna be writing our bronze data to. So I'm back in the console. I'm in the Amazon S3 console. I have a bucket called Open Data Lakes Demo US East 1. Your bucket name will be different. 
and I have a ticket key or sub key or sub directory. And that's where we're going to write our gold, silver, and bronze data, starting with our bronze data. So you can see right now that the ticket subdirectory is empty. Once we run the seven AWS glue jobs, I'll switch back and we should be able to see our Apache Parquet files here that represent the bronze or raw area of our data lake. Let me switch over to AWS Glue Studio now. And we'll take a look at the jobs. I have a lot of jobs, so let me filter on the jobs that we're using for this demonstration. There's 14 of them. And we can see those 14 jobs here. So for each of the seven tables, we have a bronze job, and then we have a silver job we're gonna be running later. So for right now, we're gonna be running the seven bronze jobs, and that will copy the data out of our databases and into our data lake. Now I could run those from the console, but to make things easier, I'm gonna start those from my terminal again using the AWS CLI, just like we did to kick off our crawlers earlier. So I'll switch over to the GitHub project. I'm going to copy those commands. We can run them all at once and they'll run in parallel. I'll go back over to my terminal. I'm still logged into my account. I'll start the jobs running and once they've started successfully, we'll switch back and watch them run from the console. So it looks like all seven jobs started successfully. If we switch back to the console, I'll go to monitoring. So I'm in the AWS Glue Studio monitoring tab and we should see the seven jobs running. And we do. So we see we have seven jobs running. These are our seven bronze jobs. Once those are finished, we'll take a look at the results. So we can see that the jobs are starting to finish. We still have four more running. We'll give it another minute. So we can see that our seven jobs finished. Let's go back over to our S3 bucket first. You remember that we had the ticket subdirectory and it was empty. Let's refresh that. And we now see a bronze subdirectory within the ticket subdirectory. If we go into there, we see seven additional subdirectories, one for each table that we extracted from our databases and wrote to our data lake using the AWS glue jobs. Let's take a look at one of these. So I've gone into category, I have 11 files. Let's take a look at another directory. Let's go into sales. We have 20 files. So we have 20 parquet files, snappy compressed parquet files. Now, if you're building a data lake, there's really no reason to go into the Amazon S3 bucket. If you're building an S3 based data lake, you're usually using a data pipeline to move the data from your data sources into your data lake. And you're usually using an analytics engine in order to perform analysis on that data. There's never ever a really good reason to go into your Amazon S3 bucket and actually go into the individual files. So I really don't care how many directories or subdirectories there are. I really don't care how many files there are. Now, if I partition the data, I do care that the partitions are working correctly. And I do want to make sure I don't have too many small files. If I do, I want to coalesce those into larger files of an optimal size, depending on the file format. But other than that, there's really no reason to actually go into your physical data lake, into your Amazon S3 bucket. Any interaction with those files will be done through the different analytics tools. But we can take a look at one of these files. So let me do a query with F3 select. And we know it's Apache Parquet and let's view it in JSON. And we'll just take a look at the first five S3 objects in the file. So this will represent our Parquet file as JSON. And we can see that we have five objects. So again, we're in the ticket bronze sales area of our data lake. I would expect to see a similar schema to what we saw in our database and we do. Sales ID, list ID, seller and buyer, event ID, quantity sold, price commission, etc. So this looks like it worked properly. So we'll assume that that part of building our data lake worked correctly. Let's switch back to our diagram for a minute. So we just completed step two. We use the AWS glue data catalog to obtain the metadata about our data sources. We use that to extract the data from our databases and we wrote that into the bronze area of our data lake. Let's switch back over to the AWS glue data catalog for a minute. And we'll go back out to tables. And we see 14 tables. So we had our seven source tables that we created originally that contain metadata about our three databases, our three data sources. And we now have seven bronze tables. Let's take a look at those. So we can see we have a location. So this is the bronze ecom date table. So this represents the date data that was in our database. It's now in our data lake that was part of the e-commerce engine. And this is in the bronze area, so it's raw data. We see the corresponding location in S3. 
So we have a metadata table that contains metadata about our data. The physical location of our data is in our Amazon S3 bucket in this subdirectory. We see our different input and output formats. We see our SERTI for serialization and deserialization. We see the file type, which is Parquet. And we see our schema again. In this schema, it should look exactly like the schema in our source file for the ecom date file. So we should see a similar sch schema that we did in our database. And again, we did not partition this data, so there's no partitions and there's no indexes. We can take a look at advanced properties. We see a few more metadata properties. We see the created by job run. So we see the ID of the job that created this particular metadata information, and we see the name of the job that created it. So if we do have any problems, we can always go back and take a look at this job, and we know exactly which job it was and the ID of that job when it ran, and we can look that up in AWS Glue Studio if we needed to. So that completes step two. In the next part of the demonstration, we'll move on to step three. We'll perform ETL or ELT on our bronze data and write that into the silver area of our data lake. So we just completed step two of our demo. We extracted data from our three data sources using our AWS Glue data catalog. We used our AWS Glue jobs to write that data into the bronze or raw area of our data lake. And we cataloged that metadata in our AWS Glue data catalog. In step three, we're gonna move the bronze or raw data in our data lake into the silver or augmented area of our data lake. We're going to perform ELT on that data. We're gonna do simple things like removing columns that we don't need, checking for nulls. We're gonna be converting some strings into integers. So performing the basic functions that you would perform as part of a data pipeline to transform the raw data into the silver and rich data, which you can start using to perform analytics on and create your curated data sets on. So again, we're going to run a series of seven Spark jobs, seven AWS glue jobs based on Apache Spark. Let's take a look at those. So we're back in our GitHub project. In our glue job scripts directory, we have seven silver jobs in addition to our seven bronze jobs. We're gonna be running these jobs. Now these jobs are pretty simple. They're gonna be extracting data from our bronze area of our data lake using the AWS glue data catalogs metadata. It will extract that data. We're gonna perform some very basic ETL or ELT on that data. And then we'll write that data into the silver area of our data lake. So these jobs look very similar. They just have some basic ETL or ELT function. So let me get those jobs started. I'll grab the seven commands. We can start all those in parallel. I'll start those and we'll switch over to our console. So we see the job starting. Once they've started successfully, I'll switch back over to the AWS Glue Studio monitoring tab. So those all started, let's switch back over. We'll go to AWS Glue Studio and we'll go to the monitoring tab and let's just refresh that and I expect to see seven jobs running. And we see seven jobs running. Let's take a look at those. So we see our seven silver jobs running. That's copying the data from the bronze area of our data lake into the silver area of our data lake and it's performing some basic ELT on that data as it moves it from the bronze to the silver area of our data lake. So it's augmenting or enriching that data, cleansing that data. Once those jobs finish, we'll take a look at the results. So we can see that those jobs are starting to finish. One more to go. And we can see that all seven silver jobs finished. So just like last time, let's switch over to our Amazon S3 bucket, which represents our data lake. We'll go back out to the ticket subdirectory. And we see now that we have a silver subdirectory in addition to our bronze subdirectory. If we go into the silver subdirectory, we see a similar file structure. We see seven subdirectories. Let's go into one of those subdirectories. We'll go into sales. And we can see we have 40 objects. So we've moved the sales data from the bronze area data lake to the silver area data lake, and we've done some transformations on that. And that's what's represented in these Parquet files. So it looks like that worked. Let's go over to our AWS Glue Data Catalog now. I'll go back into our Data Lake Demo AWS Glue Data Catalog, and we can see that we now have 21 tables. So we have our original seven source tables, which has metadata about our three data sources. We have the seven bronze tables, which have metadata about our bronze or raw of our data lake and the data that's contained therein. 
And now we have our seven silver tables, which has metadata about our silver or augmented area of our data lake and the data that's contained in there, which we extracted from the bronze area of our data lake and perform basic ETL on. So we're starting to build our data lake. You remember the medallion architecture, bronze, silver, and gold. We extracted raw data from our data sources into the bronze area. We perform basic ELT or ETL on that data. We cleanse that data. We enrich that data. We augmented that data. And we wrote that data to the silver area of our data lake. Now we're able to start the final step, step four, in which we're going to take the silver data or the augmented data and create curated data sets out of that data that are ready for our data scientists and our data engineers to be able to use to create their dashboards, their reports, and perform analytics on. So I'm back in our architectural diagram. We've already completed steps one, two, and three, and ready to start our final step, step four. I could have continued to use AWS glue jobs to perform step four, taking the silver augmented data in our data lake and creating our gold or curated data sets. However, to show you some different options available on AWS, I've decided to switch to Amazon Athena. Amazon Athena is AWS's interactive analytics or ad hoc analytics query engine based on Presto. Amazon Athena uses SQL statements to query the data in your data lake using your AWS Glue Data Catalog. In this case, I'm going to use something known as a Create Table As Select or CTAS query to create new tables in our AWS Glue Data Catalog based on the results of select statements. So using a CTAS query, I can query data in the silver area of our data lake and write that data back to both our AWS Glue Data Catalog, the metadata, and write the physical data back to our Amazon S3 bucket in the gold or curated area of our data lake all using a SQL statement. So let's take a look at that. I'll switch back over to the GitHub project. And you can remember we had the SQL scripts folder. I'll open the Amazon Athena commands. I have a number of commands in here. We're gonna create two different CTAS or create table as queries. We're gonna be looking at the sales data and I'm gonna be writing the sales data back to our database two different ways. So we'll have two gold or curated data sets one sales by category and another one sales by date. Why am I doing that? So let's pretend that we have a data scientist or a data engineering team who performs different queries based on the sales results. Sometimes they perform those queries using categories. So looking at specific categories, category groups or category names. Other times they're looking at sales by date, sales by year, sales by month, etc. So with the CTAS statements, I'm gonna query the data by category. I'm gonna write that data back to our data lake, partitioning by category group and category name in the first example. That'll give our data scientists the ability to query that data by category. And for the data scientists that wanna query that by date, I'm gonna perform another CTAS statement. I'm gonna write another curated data set back to our data lake. This time I'm gonna partition that data by year and by month. So for our data scientists or engineers that want to query that data and get results by year or by month, it will be quicker to use this data set, assuming this is a very large data set. They can query this data based on the year and the month and they'll get results back much quicker. And when they want to query it by category group or category name, they can use the first curated data set, which has been partitioned by category, specifically category group and category name, and they should get results back much faster. So let's start with our first statement. I'll copy that. I'm gonna go back to my console. I'll switch back over to the console. We're done with glue, so let's go over to Athena. So I'm bringing up the Athena console. Let's choose our AWS glue data catalog. So we see that here, data lake demo. We see our tables, we see our seven bronze and seven silver. Now we don't see is the seven source tables. So that contains metadata about the data in our three data sources, our Amazon S3 databases. That's not something we can query from Athena directly, but we can query the data that's in Amazon S3 and is represented by the 14 tables in our AWS Glue Data Catalog for bronze and silver. Let me paste the query in. So let's take a look at our create table as statement. So we see in the top part of the statement, we're defining the files that we're writing into our S3 data lake. We're defining those as Apache Parquet. We're using snappy compression, similar to the bronze and silver area of our data lake. I've defined the external location. So in our data lake, where do I wanna write these Parquet files to? Those are under the ticket subdirectory, the gold area of our data lake, and in this case, the gold sales by category curated data set. I'm gonna partition that by category group, the parent, and then by category name, the child. 
So within this area of our data lake, when we're done, if this succeeds, I would expect a series of subdirectories, one for each category group. And then within that category group, one for each category name that's associated with that category group. And we'll take a look at that when we're done and that'll make a little more sense. The last thing I'm doing is bucketing this and I'm using a bucket count of one, which means I'm taking all the data within each category name, within each category group, and I wanna bucket that down or coalesce that down to a single file so I don't get a lot of tiny files. This is a pretty small data set, so that shouldn't be an issue. And then the rest of this, you can see the select statement. So we're taking several of the tables in the silver of our data lake. In this, we see the silver listings table, the user table, the event table, the date table, etc., And we're performing a fairly complex join across those tables. We also see other basic SQL functions like concatting the first name and last name, rounding the amounts off, the commissions as a percentage, the sales as dollars, casting it properly into the right type of data primitive. So basic SQL functions, and when we're all done, we'll have a curated data set that our data scientists or data engineers can use to perform their analysis, create their dashboards, or create their reports. And again, this is gonna be by category, and then we'll do the same thing by month and year. So let's run this. So again, we're doing an aggregation or a join across several of our silver tables. We can see the statement running on the bottom. We can see the elapsed runtime and we can see the amount of data scanned. So we can see that the create table as select statement finished, the CTAS statement finished in Amazon Athena. The runtime was about a minute, 57.9 seconds, and we scanned 12.5 megabytes of data. Let's switch back over to our Amazon S3 bucket. Let's go back out to the ticket subdirectory, and we can now see that we have a gold area of our Amazon S3 bucket or of our data lake. So now we have gold, silver, and bronze. Let's go into gold. And we can see that we have gold sales by category. That's what we were expecting. And now we see our category groups. So these are our partitions. So we see shows and concerts. If we go into shows, we can see that we have plays, operas, and musicals. So within the category group of shows, we have three category names or three category types, plays, operas, and musicals. Let's go into one of these and take a look at the files. So we see a single file. You remember that I decided to concatenate or bucket these with a bucket count of one. So I have a single file, and it's, again, it's not too big, 6.3 megabytes. If we were to take a look at this, I would expect to see the aggregation or the join results across those several tables. We can use the query select with S3 again just to take a quick look at a couple of the objects, give you a sense for what the results look like. And we can see that here. So we have calendar date, the price paid, the quantity sold, the sales amount, the amount of commission, both in dollars and as a percentage, the name of the event, who the buyer was, who the seller was, and what the category name was. And of course, the category group, is it's already in the partition. So this file is physically located within the category group partition. So it looks like everything worked. That's what I would expect. So now we have our first gold or curated data set, and those are sales by category. So partition by category group, and then by category name. Let's go back to our GitHub project and let's perform a similar function, but this time we're going to partition the data by month and by year. So almost an identical query. We'll go back over to our Athena console. And I could clear that out or I can just open a new tab. Let me just open a new tab. I'll drop my query in. Query looks almost identical to the first one. In this case, gold sales by date. And you can see the difference here. We're going to partition that by year and by month. So the results should be by year. And then within each year, we should have a month subdirectory or a month subpartition or partition depending on which months are represented in sales in that year. So it could be up to 12 depending on the sales in which months they were sold. And then again, we're going to bucket that to a count of one. So I would expect one file. But again, similar select statement, joining all of our silver tables, a majority of our silver tables. So a complex joiner aggregation performing some basic SQL functions, rounding, casting, concatenating. So let's go ahead and run this. And again, we can see down in the bottom of the screen the runtime and the amount of data that's being scanned. So we can see that that CTAS statement or that create table as select statement ran much faster than our first one. Our first one took almost a minute. This only took about 15 seconds and it scanned the same amount of data, 12.5 megabytes of data. Again, let's switch back over to our S3 bucket. We'll go back out to the gold area of our data lake. 
And now we have two curated data sets in the gold area of our data lake. So we have gold sales by category. Now we have gold sales by date. If we go into that new data set, we see the year 2020. So that means that all the sales represented in the sample data, all the sales were made in the year 2020. And then in there we see each month. And this is one of the ETL functions we perform when we move the data from the bronze area of our data lake, that raw data, into the refined or silver area of our data lake, into the augmented area of our data lake. We converted the strings that represented the months, January, February, March, etc., into integers one, two, three, four, and this is why I did it. So I have a parent partition, which is an integer of the year, and then I have a child partition, and I have one for each month that sales were made. In this case, it looks like sales were made in all 12 months, so I have 12 partitions within the year 2020 representing each month of the year. Let's just go into one of these at random, and we see a single file again. So we coalesced or bucketed this data with a bucket count of one. In this case, 2.7 megabytes, still a pretty small file for our data lake. And all of the sales in the year 2020 in the ninth month of the year are contained in this file. Uh, and this is the result of that aggregation. If I were to take a look at this, it would look very similar to the last file we looked at with the select S3 function. So that works. So now we have two curated data sets. Let's go back into our AWS Glue data catalog and make sure that worked. So I'm in the data lakes demo. Let's just refresh this. We have 21 tables. We've created two gold or curated data sets. So we have 23 tables now, that looks right. So if we look at all of our prefixes, we have bronze, we have gold, we have silver, and we have source. So we started with source, then we moved into the bronze, seven tables, another seven silver tables, and finally we have our two gold or curated data sets represented by these two tables. We can open one of those up. And this time we should be able to see some partitions. So remember when we looked at the gold and silver metadata tables, we didn't have any partitions. In this case, we should see some partitions. So if we scroll down, it looks very similar to our other tables. We have our schema. If we go over to partitions, we now see that we have category group and category name. So under category group of shows, there are three category names, musicals, plays, and operas. And then under the other category group of concerts, we have pop. So those are all of our partitions. And if we had more partitions, we would see those here. Let's look at one more table. Let's look at our gold sales by date. Check our partitions. So if I go down, again, we're in the gold sales by date versus gold sales by category. Remember we had four partitions last time in our other table. And this time we have 12 partitions. So all of our sales fell in the year 2020. And it looks like there are sales in every month. So we have 12 partitions. So we have the year 2020 as a partition, and then within that partition, that parent partition is the month partition. Uh, and we've partitioned that by an integer representing the month. So that looks like it works. So our data lake is complete. We've created our medallion architecture, our data lake based on that Databricks medallion architecture of gold, silver, and bronze. So we have our raw data and the bronze area of our data lake. That was the raw data that we extracted from our three databases. We then have the silver area of our data lake. So we took that bronze data. We performed basic ELT or ETL on that data. We cleansed that data. We refined that data. We augmented that data. We wrote that to the silver area of our data lake. And finally, we created two gold or curated data sets. We took that refined or augmented silver data. We joined those tables. We did a fairly complex join on those tables. We performed concatenation. We casted our data. And we wrote that data back to two curated data sets one partition by category group and category name, and another curated data set partition by year and by month. So our data lake is now complete. In the last part of our demonstration, I'm actually gonna write some queries against our data lake, and we're gonna look at some ways to write more efficient queries in order to use these partitions properly that we've created. How can we get the maximum performance and minimum cost out of our data lake as we perform our analysis as data scientists and data engineers? So we'll explore that in the last part of our demonstration today. In the last part of our data lake demonstration, we're gonna write a couple queries in Amazon Athena. And what we wanna focus on is how we write more efficient queries using the partition data that we wrote in our gold or curated area of our data set and how Apache Parquet columnar format can help us when we're writing our queries. So I've written a couple queries. Let me grab the first one. I'll paste it into Amazon Athena and then we'll talk about it. I'll clear out these old queries. Let me drop in the first query. So this first query is very inefficient. We're doing a select star and a select star is generally inefficient in all cases. 
And we're making that against the gold sales by category, the gold curated data set, gold sales by category. So this was the sales data that we partitioned by category group and category name. And you can see that we're not using any where clauses in this. So we're not taking advantage of these partitions. We're also not taking advantage of the parquet format, columnar format data. We're just saying select star. So we're saying just return all of the columns. So let's run that and see how long it takes and more specifically how much data is returned or more specifically with Athena, how much data is scanned. So we just ran that. We can see that it took 2.5 seconds to run and it scanned 27 megabytes of data but a select star. So we're just saying return all columns. We're not using any where clauses. We're not taking advantage of our partitions. So let me go back over and grab the next query and then I'll explain it. And I'll paste this in right below the first query. So in our second query, same limit, same curated data set, gold sales by category. But in this case, I'm being very explicit in the columns that I need. So I want to return the calendar date, the sales amount, and the commission. So instead of using a select star, I'm being very explicit about the three columns I want returned. You can remember that Apache Parquet is a columnar format. And the way in which it stores this data, it's very effective at returning only the columns that I've queried. So let's run this query. And remember our last query, we scanned 27 megabytes of data in about two and a half seconds. So this time it took slightly less 1.7 seconds. So again, these really aren't big data sets. If these were hundreds of thousands of rows, millions of rows, hundreds of millions of rows, or even billions of rows, then the time in which this query took to run would make a bigger impact. In this case, it's still pretty quick, two and a half versus 1.7 seconds. But what I want you to notice is the amount of data scanned, and that's what you're paying for, at least with Athena, or all the way down now to 5.39 megabytes of data. So considerably less data, a fifth or less data that we scan simply by using the columns. So we only return the three columns that we wanted versus the 10 or 12 columns that are contained in this curated data set. Let's switch back over and grab our next query. So let's write a query that's even more efficient. We'll paste this in and then we'll take a look at it. So in this case, similar query, same three columns, same curated data set, same limit. But in this case, we're using our partition. So we're using a category group of shows and a category name of operas. We know we only want these columns. We only need this information from this curated data set. And we're only interested in shows which are operas. So this is a very efficient query. So we went from about 27 megabytes of data down to about 5.3 megabytes of data. Let's take a look and see what happens now that we use our partitions properly. So we should only be scanning the data within the shows category group within the operas category name subdirectory. So only that data should be scanned. And we see now that we've scanned 726 kilobytes of data. So we went from 27 megabytes over 27 megabytes down to a little over five megabytes and then down to 726. And the difference is we were very explicit in the columns we wanted to return from our Apache Parquet format files that are written into our Amazon S3 based data lake and we used our partitions effectively. So let me switch back over to our Amazon S3 bucket, which represents our data lake for a moment. So when we ran that last query, that was against the gold sales by category curated data set. And we did a where clause, which limited the results. We filtered the results by the category group of shows and the category group name of operas. So instead of scanning all of the data in our gold sales by category curated data set, we only scanned the category group partition of shows and the child partition or category name partition of opera. So Athena only scanned this data using the metadata information that was in the AWS Glue data catalog. So it was much more efficient. It cost us less and it returned it quicker. One last query and we'll finish our demonstration. Let me grab the query. I'll drop it into Athena and then we'll take a look at it. I'll go back over to Athena. Let me clear out all these queries and we'll paste our fourth query in. So in this case, I just wanna run a query against our other curated data set. So we just ran gold sales by category. We ran a couple queries against that. Let me run one against gold sales by date. So you can remember the difference with this curated data set is we partition the data by year and by month. So let's perform a similar query, same three columns, same limit, different curated data set. And this time I'm gonna use the partitions. I'm gonna use the year partition of 2020 and the sub partition of the child partition, the month partition of month six. So let's run that. 
So we can see that that query finished. The runtime was 1.7 seconds. And more importantly, the data scan was a little over one megabyte, 1.09 megabytes. So instead of scanning all the data within our goal sales by date curated data set, we only scan the data we needed, which was specifically for the year 2020 in the month six or the month of June. So we only scan that data and we only return the data that we needed. Had we not used the where clause and I can run this query again, let's just run it against the curated data set just to see how much would be returned. The total data set size, it would have had to scan 12 megabytes of data. So instead of 12 megabytes of data, it scanned about one megabyte of data because we properly use the where clause. And in this case, the where clause matched our partitions. So that's also a very efficient query. And that's an example of using the proper curated data set. So that's the end of our demonstration. In this brief demonstration, we built a data lake on AWS using AWS Glue and Amazon Athena. We extracted data from our databases from our Amazon RDS databases, which represented our enterprise systems. We can bind all those into our data lake into a bronze area of our data lake, that raw data. We then refined or augmented that data. We cleansed that data and wrote that into the silver of our data lake. We then use that silver data to create curated data sets doing complex joins and aggregations and SQL functions on that data and wrote that data into the augmented or gold area of our data lake. And then to finish up our demonstration, we looked at some ways in which we can write more efficient queries against our data lake using Amazon Athena. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. If you did enjoy the demonstration, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for future videos.